Next, next we have uh, a special treat. This is actually uh, the main featured speaker for tonight is the Honorable Curtis Loftus, Jr. Our South Carolina State Treasurer is here. Curtis is going to come on to town, and he is working on something really important. I know we think this is really important, and it is, but he's talking about billions of dollars of retirement savings, potentially. Curtis, welcome. Welcome. Part of my tenure is to say that I am the treasurer, I'm a politician, and I'm on everybody's side here. I will vote with anybody who gets up. I have nothing but universal love, and I'm with all of you. <laughs> uh, th thank you for having me here. I knew there was a lot going on, but I've been a bit uh, removed from it. The treasurer's office is kind of a transitional office, you know, a transactional. I deal uh, a lot of getting the weeds with things, and so many of these events that uh, are very important to y'all, as well they should be, I just don't see myself. You know, people ask me about it, and I say, if I can't be involved with all of it, I just won't be involved because I'm busy. Uh, the treasurer's office has been a lot of fun. It's a great honor. I didn't realize how much work it was going to be. I knew it was going to be a lot of work, but I had no idea how much it was going to be. I can honestly say I might be making minimum wage now, which is, I think, as much as I ever made, but I won't complain. Uh, I've had a good time being involved, or I've had a, a lot of time involved with the Investment Commission. And the reason we're here is we've talked a lot about the Investment Commission, and I've made it very important to go around and talk about a couple of things that don't make the newspaper. One is the rank and file staff. We have a good staff. Those of you who have worked in government, those of you who have been around large sums of money or large organizations, know that lots of times the problem is not with the rank and file person. Lots of times it's with the leadership. And we've had a leadership problem. When I go over there, I could probably go there, I may go back after work, there'll be people over there working. 27, 30, 35, 40-year-old folks with families at home, they work hard. And why am I here telling you this? Because they pick up the bad rap for the leadership questions. Now, what we've got when it comes to transparency is we've got leadership that says that nobody can read the contracts that bind you as taxpayers. Nobody can read them but the select few people. My lawyers can't read them. My financial advisors can't read them. My chief of staff can't read them. The governor's lawyer can't read them. Alan Wilson, the chief legal officer of the state, can't read these contracts. We have many contracts, well, we have half a dozen that are over a billion dollars. Not a million, but a billion dollars. And we have one that will total three billion dollars. And they're trying to tell me Roxanne's boy can't read that contract. How this works is that by keeping the power, I mean, keeping the knowledge close, they keep the power. And so we're going to go before the Budget Control Board, because I thought it was it was necessary for me to let the Budget Control Board know what I found out in the last year. And what I found out was that the onerous interpretation, and I believe the misinterpretation of these contracts, keep us from providing oversight. Now, you've all watched the Senate, and you've watched the House, you've watched your county council argue over very little. One time we argued over a $70,000 light pole at South Carolina State, and the Budget Control Board over two different months, 70000 bucks. We have $25 billion, bigger than the state budget. We manage that on a daily basis, and we have no oversight. So I've taken my petition to the Budget Control Board. I sit on that board, and there are four other members. We're going to meet on the 12th of July, and we're going to hear all this out. I hope that we're going to reach compromise in the largest problems with confidentiality. I hope we'll reach a compromise before then. But if we don't, I'm more than happy to let, let, let the uh, assembled board make a decision. People forget that it's your money, those of you who pay into it by way of contribution, that you're a government employee from the city level, county, state, it doesn't matter. And also, as a taxpayer, you're the backstop. We went from, two, in the year 2000, we didn't know any money. We were effectively fully funded. Now, 13 years later, we owe $14 billion. I want you to think about that. If the General Assembly had said, we're going to put a $14 billion debt on you, a billion dollars a year, there would have been an uproar. But because there's no oversight, because nobody understands what they do, they were able to pass that through. And that's what's happened. We made some meager changes. Or the General Assembly made some meager changes in the retirement situation this year. That was good. They should have done more, but it was good that they started. So that's, that's, that's good. So I want you to know that in the next week or two, you're going to be hearing a lot about the Investment Commission. It does involve you. You are the backstop. You're the people who have to pay the bills. And many of you are the people who get in retirements. 
And as your state treasurer, I have an unusual view. I've been a member of the Budget Control Board. I'm a trustee. We hold the trust. We own the assets. Nobody else does. We have a 401D federal trust that's given to the five of us. I'm a member of the commission where we vote. We go and vote on these investments, and the commission staff works for us. But what really is taking my, temp, my time and my attention is that the treasurer is the custodian. And as you know, the custodian is the guy who's responsible for safety and security of that money. I'm responsible for the reporting, and we fall them down on that. And that's why I've been at loggerheads. I appreciate that everybody in this room tonight feels strongly about what's going on. I feel strongly about the issues I'm involved with. And I think we're going to be able to work them all out in the next two weeks. Let's hope. Otherwise, it'll be a real funny brook. We'll have a similar situation there at the board. But I'm prepared for that. It's all about transparency and it's all about accountability. I can promise you this. 90% of the troubles that I see every single day, and I see troubles you've never heard of, 90% of those troubles go away if we have transparency. The ones who hide it are the ones who have lots to hide. And that's just how it works. And uh, I hope to get this investment commission behind me in the next two weeks because i got a bigger fish to fry, to be honest with you. I've been studying something else as well. And we've got even, uh, we have substantially the same problems at another place in state government. There's no end to the problems that we have. And transparency will solve them all. I'll finish with this. The reason I pick certain battles, the reason I get involved with these bigger, and, and I'll just call them bloody, because they are, is because nobody else will do them. And what I find is the reason they won't is because the winners and the losers get bloody. And our elected officials let you down every day. They won't fight the big battles. And that's what matters. I sit there in my office and I hear this conversation. I see it in the media. I see it in rooms like this all over the state. And I'm thinking none of this is involved with what we are supposed to be doing on a daily basis. The treasurer has a lot of responsibility. People always say, well, you're going to run for another office. You just have a stepping stone. I can tell you, if I stay in this office the day I die, I won't be finished. Because the way we treat your money as a state is abominable. It's a shame. It's a sin. The Comptroller General, the Governor, the Lieutenant Governor, Alan, who I know works a lot of hours, we all have jobs that we can't finish. And yet we want to talk about other things. Let's remember why we're here. We're conservatives. We believe in smaller government, we believe in leaner government, but we believe in a government that works. And I remember when Joe was not yet in office, and I remember Lyman and Nikki when there was 10 or 15 of us in the old courthouse and I was 16 or 17 years old, Andre Bauer sleeping on the bench in the back, only after you sold us candy and twice the markup. <laughs> I remember our pledge is that we're gonna have a good, efficient, and lean government. Let's remember that whatever we do to now, tonight, whatever y'all do, I'm not a voting member, thank goodness I get to skate out of this without any trouble, but whatever y'all do tonight, remember this, it's got to be down to the people we serve. If it doesn't benefit the folks out there who pay the bills and whose rights and privileges we trade every day as our officers, as their officers, if it doesn't benefit them, we're wasting our time and theirs. So try to keep that in mind. Good luck. I'll be praying for y'all as I skate through here uh, with, with those skin off my back. Like you said, I've known you since you were 16 or 17 years old. And if you said I had on a red blouse, I'd check the label. I'll check to see if it's really black. I appreciate you and your efforts. Thank you very much. Um, the question is, have you succeeded in calling for a special meeting of the board? And is this on the agenda? It is. We're having a special meeting. The governor called it for the three, so three o'clock. Because I'm going to be in Portland, Oregon, doing due diligence with the commission. i got to fly back through the night to get here. But we'll all be there. But the hope is that with the deadline and the board there, that we're going to compromise all this. I won't get everything I want. They won't get everything they want. But the taxpayers and the account holders will get enough to make them whole. And that's At what's least about. you'll know what's happening. That's right. There's going to be a lot of news on this the next two weeks. Y'all will be surprised at much of what comes out. But you'll see what I was fighting. You'll understand it. And I know I'm out of time, so I'll go. But I think you'll all be pleased to how this is going to work. And again, it all starts here with y'all. Y'all are the ones who decide who, who you elect. You're the ones who decide who you keep in the office. Y'all are the most important. Folks like us, I get a paycheck. Can you believe that? I mean, y'all don't get paychecks. I get a paycheck. So I appreciate what you do. Thank you very much. In this meeting, is the state auditor going to be involved? Uh, probably not the state auditor. 
Uh, we'll have members from the commission, member from the treasurer's office, and then the five uh, other four members of the board and their staffs. And there'll be a, there'll be a whole bunch of lawyers. There'll be a lot of lawyers making money today. Every every one of the lawyers will be on the uh, Senator Knott says has a question. Yes, sir. Curtis, I just want to tell you, I thank you for the way you fought and stood up for the taxpayers up there when you came to the Senate. And we started out with uh, pro pra practically no votes. And I played that vote whenever we ended up uh, uh, with your help and uh, the help of the Senate up there. We won it, uh, what was it, one vote or two votes? No, we started uh, off, I mean, we were going to lose that vote probably 35 to 10. We won that vote 35 to 10. 35-10. Thanks for you. Thanks for you know it was the funniest thing. People that I that aren't known for voting that conservative way across the state, they all came in. They understood that we needed to have a public official, an elected official, stand and watch all. We hadn't had that in all cases, and that's what makes the difference in here. Because I can get to the media. We've gotten to the media. We're going to have big changes. I'm over time, but I want to thank and you. You had, you had some good staff up there, too. Thank you, sir. We won that. We started off going to lose that, and we won that. In fact, we won four subsequent of those. That's right. One named Senator was after me. We won every one of them. Thank you very much for being thank here. You. Thank you.